Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is many a true and welcome back to Skyrim, where having become the king, queen, guildmaster, whatever, or otherwise destroyed in the case of the Thieves Guild, basically having become the king of absolutely everything, it's time to make some story progress today. And I know I normally say that, then I see something over there, and I go, ooh, what's that over there? And we run over there, and then that's the next 16 episodes. No, that can't happen today, because I'm literally already here. I'm at High Hrothgar already, so nothing can distract me, because... No! No, no, no! Ignore that compass marker, it's probably nothing. Also, what's in this chest? There anything? No, it's empty. That's a shame, that's just the supply chest. Right, let's go and sort out the... What was I supposed to be doing? I'm supposed to be going to the throat of the world. I need to go to the throat of the world, because that's the name of the quest, because, yep, the Greybeards need to actually teach me a shout to down a dragon and diddly diddly dee, so let's get that underway. All right, on gear, according to something I found painted on a wall in a cave, there's a special shout to actually bring down a dragon. Let's have that, please. Where did you learn of that? Who have you been talking to? Uh, some dicks called the Blades, but honestly I hate them and have no interest in doing, like, anything they tell me about. The Blades, of course. They specialize in meddling in matters they barely understand. Their reckless arrogance knows no bounds. They have always sought to turn the Dragonborn from the path of wisdom. Have you learned nothing from us? Would you simply be a tool in the hands of the Blades to be used for their own purposes? I've literally done nothing for the Blades whatsoever. They just helped me find a thing with the help of, like, a wise old man who knew where it was. And you didn't know... Excuse me, we're having a bloody conversation here. Yeah, that told you. Wait. Uh, forgive me, I was... Intemperate. I allowed my emotions to cloud my judgment. Master Einarth reminded me of my duty. The decision whether or not to help you is not mine to make. Damn straight, Angir. So, teach me the bloody shouts. No, I cannot teach it to you because I do not know it. It is called Dragonrend, but its words of power are unknown to us. We do not regret this loss. Dragonrand holds no place within the way of the voice. Alright, what's plan B for defeating Alduin then? Only Parthenax, the master of our order, can answer that question, if he so chooses. Alright, time to speak to him then, marvellous. Only those whose voice is strong can find the path. We will teach you a shout to open the way to Parthenax. You see, we could have just started with that, okay? This conversation was needlessly convoluted. So the Greybeards are about to teach me a shout that lets me turn off a storm that gets me to the top of a mountain. I'm moderately confident I could actually just ride a horse up there to be perfect. In fact, actually, hmm, now that I've said that, I'm kind of curious as to whether that's true. Because generally in Skyrim, there's nowhere a horse can't go. Right, now, how am I just going to make a good starting point here? Because I suspect that me and Aardvark can basically say, screw your stupid shout, I'm just going up to Partho and Axe myself. Because there is nothing in Skyrim that a horse cannot do. <laughs> yeah, the game says learn this shout. Screw your shout, screw your shout, I have a horse, I have got a demon horse from, like, beyond the grave or something. Come on, oh, oh, oh. He's sort of glitching through the terrain. That's that's actually a pretty good start. Yes, come on. Come on, I believe in you, demon horse. Here we go. Here we flipping go. Now we're getting somewhere. Just need to get up these rocks. Step by step. We've already started making some progress here. Yep, there we go. We've managed to hop up one rock there. We're making pro- Oh yeah, this is good. This is a good angle. This is a really good angle. Come on. Come on, come on. Okay, now round this way. Round this way, because horses are really good at not losing their altitude. Right, flip round here. Come on, I just need to find... Yeah, those rocks. Those rocks will be good. Those rocks will be the rocks right there. That'll let me get up a little bit. Screw your stupid shout. <laughs> Screw your shout. I have a horse. Okay, I've managed to make it round the corner. It looks to me like there might be a slightly shallower way up a bit further round to the left. I'm just, I'm just here right now. There's a mountain. It's fine. Just climbing it. 
Uh, I've kind of struggled to get up there. Okay, if I keep looping around to the left, I think I might have a chance. Especially if you can get up this bit of rock here. Come on. Come on, Aardvark. I believe in... Uh-oh. This, look, this looks a little bit like a... That didn't go so well, but that's fine. I can get my way back up round here. Now, you know what? Well flipping done, game. If they actually deliberately try to design this mountain to stop me doing exactly what I'm doing right now, they've done a good job. I really am struggling to find a good way to get up top. Like, it's actually pretty simple to ride a horse straight up the side of the mountain to get to High Hrothgar, but throw to the world I have been slightly struggling with, yes. Alright, fine game. I'll learn the stupid bloody shout. And they've written it on the ground for me right down there. Lovely. I've learned sky, clear skies. They teach me all three words, right? Yeah, okay, fine. I just get all three words immediately. And I'm guessing, like, whirlwind sprint, they're going to basically uh, give me the understanding of it. So I don't, yeah, grant you understanding of clear skies. It makes sense, because otherwise, just in case you didn't, like, have any dragon souls, you need to, like, go and hunt three dragons, and they're not guaranteed spawn. So that would be kind of annoying. So get this one for free. You really don't need to. Like, I have, like, I think nine or so spare dragon souls right now, which is lovely. Right, anyway, I have got that sorted out. Let's go visit Parthorn Axe. Also, I think they were trying to give me, like, a warning about how the path is perilous or something, but ah, screw it, I'm sure it's fine. So let's just quickly get rid of some of that. And why did I just take damage? Okay, just took damage for some reason. Right, well, let's be on our way. Lovely. It looks like the cooldown's really low, so if the storm kicks up again, just basically do it again. Yeah, I'm still sporadically actually taking damage. Is it because of, like, the, the mist? Is the mist cold? It's possibly, like, the mist is cold. I'm not sure. I'm just going to keep doing it over and over, because, yeah, the recharge on the basic thing is basically non-existent. So, yeah, I'm just going to do it into the mist. Fine, yeah, it must just be, like, the freezing cold mist. Also, ah, you live up here. Well, that's fine. I think I can handle an ice wraith at this point. And uh, we have got a lovely evening for this, by the way. Oh, no, a frost troll. However shall I defeat him? I don't know. Oh, no. The terror of a frost troll. I like it. I suppose they actually do that intentionally. Like, I like it when games do this. Like, you know, the very first time you um, come up here, you run into that bloody frost troll on the way to High Hrothgar. And if you're a low-level character just trying to do the main quest, he's a bloody menace. He's a nightmare. Now you run into this guy here, you're just like, eh, he's a mild inconvenience not even worth noting. Just let you feel like, you know, you've actually got somewhere as a character, which is nice. And also, we've got a lovely night for this. Bloody hell, Skyrim's still pretty. This is an old, old game at this point, but it's still just stunningly beautiful at times, isn't it? It's just gorgeous. Right, on we flipping go. You know, it's quite a bloody walk to actually get here. I've been walking up here for quite a bloody long time. And there's a dragon. Oh no, a dragon. We better murder it. I bet it's not Parthorn Axe. Oh, it was Parthorn Axe. Plot twist. Hello, Parthorn Axe. Greetings, Wundernik. I am... Parthenax. Who are you? What brings you to my Strunmach, my mountain? You know, I always thought his name was Parthenax, but apparently he's Parthenax. So I've just been saying his name wrong internally for like the best part of a decade at this point. So, that's fun. You know what? Let's just kind of skip the coquettish flirting of... Oh my goodness, I didn't know you were a dragon, and you didn't know I was a dragonborn. Look, I think we both know who the other is. Yes, Vaza. You speak true, Dovakin. Forgive me. It has been long since I held Tinvak with a stranger. I gave in to the temptation to prolong our speech. And indeed, why live alone on a mountain if you like chatting to people, Parthenax? Evenar Balok, there are many hungers it is better to deny than to feed. Drechni Nakib, discipline against the lesser, aids in Kahnar, denial of the greater. Tell me, why do you come here, Volan? Why do you intrude on my meditation? Now, I know this is going to sound a little bit awkward, um, but I actually need to know of a secret special awesome power that lets me murder dragons. But I am not planning to use it on you. Hmm. Drem. Patience. 
There are formalities which must be observed at the first meeting of two of the Dove. By long tradition, the Elder speaks first. Hear my Thum. Feel it in your bones. Match it if you are Dova King. The Rotmulag waits. Right, so he's just given me a word of power. So I'll just quickly learn that in a second. Fun fact about this word, by the way, um, it's not always the same word. If you haven't learnt any of the big fire breath uh, word yet, because this is just one of the three, then that's just the first word. If you learn a different word elsewhere, it's the second, and it can be the third if you've learnt the other two. I can't remember how many I've actually learnt, however, so let's find out, because I honestly can't remember. Yep, for me, that is actually the second, so I'm actually going to unlock and actually do a more powerful shout than he's expecting, which hopefully will not break the game or cause him to go hostile. You're tall. Right, well, he doesn't seem to be attacking me. Uh, yes, Sosedo Vrostmul. The dragon blood runs strong in you. It is long since I had the pleasure of speech with one of my own kind. So, you have made your way here to me. No easy task for a jaw, mortal. Even for one of Dova Sauce, dragon blood. What would you ask of me? We've already done this bit, I just want the bloody dragon wren shout. Ah, I have expected you, Proda. You would not come all this way for Tinvak with an old Dova. No, you seek your weapon against Alduin. Look, Parthanax, do you know this bloody shout or not? Croesus, sorrowfully, no. It cannot be known to me. Your kind. Jaw, mortals, created it as a weapon against the Dove, the dragons. Our Hadrime, our minds, cannot even comprehend its concepts. Now there's a fun bit of dragon linguistics. When he referred to me as a mortal in the singular, it was J-O-O-R. But then when he referred to mortals in the plural, it was J double O double R E. So you pluralize in Dover by adding an R E onto the end, perhaps. Or maybe duplicating the final letter and adding an E on the end if you need it in order to make it more pronounced. Ooh. Dragon linguistics. Look, where do we get the bloody shout from? Sorry, I got distracted there for a second. Drem, all in good time. First. A question for you. Why do you want to learn this, Thum? We've been over this twice, murdering Alduin. Yes, Alduin, Zembach, the elder brother, gifted, grasping, and troublesome, as is so often the case with Firstborn. But why? Why must you stop Alduin? Well, I guess someone else theoretically could, and I could just hear about it later, but that would be a disappointing end to the game, to be honest. Also, I think there was something, something prophecy. Mm, true, but Costide prophecy tells what may be, not what should be. Costide Salo Ark, just because you can do a thing does not always mean you should. Do you have no better reason for acting than destiny? Are you nothing but a plaything of Dez, of fate? Well, to be honest, I have been pretty much entirely ignoring this quest for 
months, pretty much probably years of in-game time, months of real-world time. So you know what, I'm not really a plaything of fate. I've pretty much done literally everything else in the world before getting to this. Anyway, can we just skip to the bit where you tell me about Dragonrand? Few now remember that this was the very spot where Alduin was defeated by the ancient tongues. Varucht Unslad. Perhaps none but me now remember how he was defeated. Okay, using Dragon Rand, we know this. Hmm, yes and no. Viknusni Karon. Alduin was not truly defeated either. If he was, you would not be here today seeking to defeat him. The Nords of those days used the Dragonrend shout to cripple Alduin, but this was not enough. Ok Mulag Unslad. It was the Kel, the Elder Scroll. They used it to cast him adrift on the currents of time. Okay, an Elder Scroll, what's that? I'm carrying four of them. I've already got the one from the observatory ages ago. Then I think I'm still carrying the three from Dawnguard. So I actually have four of them right bloody now. And oh no, are you saying the ancient Nord just sent Alduin forward in time? Because I can now do that, but like four times as much. But actually, I'll just do it once. And then I'll leave like the three other scrolls with you. And then I can just go off and retire somewhere. And like when he shows up again three more times, we can do it three more times. Then everything will be fine. If you brought that Kel, that Elder Scroll, back here to the Tid Ahran, the Time Wound, with the Elder Scroll that was used to break time, you may be able to cast yourself back to the other end of the break. You could learn Dragonrend from those who created it. Well, hilarious bloody coincidence, I happen to already have the thing. So, uh, <laughs> you're supposed at this point to go on a mighty long epic quest that involves you traveling through dwarven ruins and through black reach and like through a tower and then off to something else. Yeah. As it turns out, Elder Knowledge has just been started and immediately completed, which is marvellous. So I already have it. So, uh, never seen this before. What is going to be the dialogue from Parthenax if I basically say, actually, um, I've already got it by odd coincidence? You have it. The Kel. The Elder Scroll. Tidkrech Kalos. Time shudders at its touch. There is no question. You are doom-driven. Kogan Akatosh. The very bones of the Earth are at your disposal. Go then. Fulfill your destiny. Take the scroll to the Time Wound. Do not delay. Alduin will be coming. He cannot miss the signs. And that is a real shame, he doesn't actually have anything special to say. Fine, let's see what's going on back in time or whatever. Right, so into the time wibble we go. Now I've got these three Elder Scrolls. Uh, those aren't the right ones, right? Those are the... Wait, hang on, are they the... Is it two? Oh no, maybe I've only got three. I thought I had four, but maybe I've got three. What happens if I try and, like, open the wrong one? Like, if I just do this... Was, was that right? Because I feel like that wasn't right. Now, I've, I've gone a bit wibbly, and also, for some reason, that killed Benor. That's just bloody weird. Uh, but no, uh, my vision went wibbly. Benor died for no well-explained reason, and I didn't go through the... Sorry! I've got quite a few Elder Scrolls. Sometimes I forget which is which. Right, I think this is actually the right one, the dragon one, right? Give that an open, and yep, that looks more flipping like it. Marvellous. And now we can learn Dragon Rand from the Nord heroes, who apparently weren't such big damn heroes, because they were completely incapable of defeating Alduin. So instead, they just basically sent him forward in time for me to take care of. So well done, you stupid bastards. 
And there we go. We have learnt the power of Dragonrend, forcing Alduin down to the ground from these three heroes. But tragically, I suspect it wasn't enough, because yeah, we know it didn't actually work out so well. I don't think much of these Nord heroes, to be honest. They're pretty terrible at the jobs. There's like literally three of them and they can't take down Alduin. I'm mean, pretty sure I'm going to be able to do it with just me later. I mean, technically, I think I'm going to have some heroes helping me out too when the time comes, but I don't really need them. Now that I've actually got Dragonbane and whatever. Yeah, there we go. Basically, he's decided he can't be bothered with the fighting anymore and he's just going to basically leave it up to the people next Wednesday to take care of Alduin for him. Fine, well, I can take care of that for you. You are banished. Alduin. And off Alduin goes until he shows up again at the beginning of the game. Job done, marvellous. And wibbly 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 back we come to the present. Marvellous. And unfortunately now current day Alduin is back. So we better take care of him too. So, brand new spell, and I know all of the words of it, and conveniently the recharge is very, very low just in case I miss. So I've got Dragon Rent here, and I'd say, more importantly, I've got something else as well. And that's Dragon Bane! Lovely, so hang on, I just need to wait for you to... I need to wait for him to hold still for a second, otherwise I'm going to struggle to actually hit him. Actually, also, Benor's clothes have gone missing. I don't know where they've gone, but they've just naffed off. Wait, that's Parthorn Axe. Which one's- That's you! Come- Just stop here! Stop here! Oh, we got him! I think we got him! Yep, we got him! So he's now stuck coming down to say hello to me! Yep, of- Wait, was that him or was that- Was that Parthorn Act? A re yeah, that was him, because he, he's the darker one. Right, down we cut. Right, Alduin, uh, me and you, one on one. Oh dear, yep. Yep, you're actually pretty tough, but fortunately you're using magic, which is a terrible idea, because- Oh, yep, you're, you're better when you're just biting me. Right, but- if he's just trying to straight up use breath attacks, then basically that's not going to work for him at all. Probably better I just keep a magic spell out in terms of healing, to be honest. Right, Alduin, 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 Alduin. I need to get him. Oh, blimey. He's using that thing he used at Helgen. That's probably going to hurt at some point. Hold, hold still. Hold the bloody hell still. That's right. Come in for a breath attack or something. Okay, I'm just going to go for it anyway. Um, did I get him? I think I got him. It went straight through a thing and that's fine. Actually, is this thing even fully recharged? I didn't even check. It's recharged enough, but if I happen to have a... Screw it. We've got 10 bajillion lesser soul gems. Keep it fully charged. Right, get around the back of him. Get around the back. Oh, yeah. Even with Dragon Bane, we're struggling a little bit here. Uh, and don't forget, keep turning because his bite attack is the most dangerous thing. If he's stuck using breath attacks, he's a bit screwed. Uh, but as it is, we're doing all right. Yeah, this will do. This'll do. This'll do. I think we might be able to take him out of this. Okay, I'm just going to back off just for safety. Naked Benor's getting in on the action. Restoration's going up. And I think you are screwed. And now heal. Job flipping done. And now he wants to have a nice little, you know, discussion with me about how mighty he is. Can't be slain here. Well, we'll give it a go. Keep hitting him. That's just using up charge for no reason. Oh, well, never mind. Benor, put some clothes on. Not prevail against me. I will outlast you, mortal. All right. So he's decided to just naff off. I did beat him, which is an excellent sign for later. And now I can talk to one of three people. And one of them's literally on a rock over there, and the other two aren't. So let's actually try starting with the person who's okay. Fine. Don't actually hang around. Just naff off somewhere. Whatever. Oh, you've started to... I was literally coming... Stay still. Just hold still for two bloody minutes. I want to have a chat. You truly have the voice of a Dova. Alduin's allies will think twice after this victory. Right, and uh, by the way, we're going to need to figure out where he actually naffed off to because there was a vague implication that he's immortal and can't actually be beaten here right now or something. Yes... One of his allies could tell us, Mat Mahus, but it will not be so easy to convince one of them to betray him. Perhaps the Hafkasayun, the palace in Whiterun, Dragon's Reach. It was originally built to house a captive Dova. 
A fine place to trap one of Alduin's allies, hmm? Alright, makes sense to me, and the Isle of Wight Run seems to like me, so I'm sure he'll actually be on board with all of this. And while we're up here chatting to Parthenax, yeah, he could basically improve one of your three shouts. I can't remember what the other two do. I think Yol's the fire one, and makes your fire spell a bit better. I generally can't remember what theme is, but I remember it not being very good. Uh, I definitely want Foos upgraded, because upgraded Foos is hilarious, because Foos is already hilarious, and if he upgrades it for you, basically it just makes it even more powerful, and that just makes it funnier. It is called force in your tongue. But as you push the world, so does the world push back. Think of the way force may be applied effortlessly. Imagine but a whisper pushing aside all in its path. That is Fus. Let its meaning fill you, Sum Ark Mora. You will push the world harder than it pushes back. And there we go. Force without effort has been added. And I can swap that round if I want to, by the way. I can have, like, any of them. Uh, but I like the Foos one. I remember that one's, like, by far the best. And it's... Put some clothes on! Yes, there we go. I stagger less and foes stagger more. And that's useful because staggering is really bloody useful. Oh, this is interesting. I was just kind of running up to meet the Jarl and the courier ran up. I just kind of assumed Ben or died a few more times and it was a bit more gold, but no. Apparently I have an urgent letter from Quintus Navale in uh, Windhelm. I don't know who that is. Possibly it's someone annoyed at me for how I keep coming into town and murdering all the police. Oh, he's the guy in the potion shop, or the alchemy shop, I suppose. Right! I was kind of expecting this to happen a long time ago. Right, during Norellian's convalescence, I've been studying the Legends of the File. I don't know enough of enchanting to make one anew. With proper materials, I might be able to repair the original. Please come and see me as soon as you can. Okay, I know you said this is urgent. I will maybe, maybe come and see you later. I don't know if I can be bothered. You're asking me to repair a small ancient jug for an old man who's like already in the process of dying. So I'm not convinced this is necessarily the most important thing in the world. Like I'm literally trying to save the universe from the world eating dragon. Like that feels more important. Also, I just nipped home and I discovered something. Guess how much weight I've been carrying around for who knows how many parts purely in books that were no longer quest items because the relevant quests had been completed and thus I could have got rid of them at any point and their weight did actually count. 26! 26 weight I've been carrying around in bloody books. Okay, your Yarliners, hear me out on this one. Basically, during this terrifying war with the dragons where the dragons occasionally show up and burn everything down, I would like to deliberately attract a particularly tough dragon into your actual house just upstairs. How are you feeling about that plan? Uh, I must have misheard you. I thought you asked me to help you trap a dragon in my palace. Yep, yeah, I'm the Thane, so I expect you to basically go along with this, damn it. Of course. You already saved White Run from that dragon. I owe you a great deal. But I don't understand. Why let a dragon into the heart of my city? When we've been working so hard to keep them out. Something, something, information. Basically interrogation, actually. Pretty much I need to interrogate the bastards. All doing. The world eater himself. But how can we fight him? Doesn't his return mean it's the end times? No, because he's been here once before and it wasn't the end times then. So therefore his presence now can't fundamentally mean the end times. Because, like, you know, it's already happened before, and they took care of him before. Not well, but they did. Look, I'm Dragonborn, my destiny diddly diddly d. I don't know about such things, but I heard the Greybeard summon you. That's good enough for me. I want to help you, Dragonborn, and I will. But I need your help first. Do you think the Stormcloaks will sit idle while this dragon is slaughtering my men and burning down my city? No. I can't risk weakening the city while we are under the threat of enemy attack. I'm sorry. So, that means we need to basically remove the risk of an enemy attack. 
Two ways of doing that, of course. One, we basically just win one way or the other, though admittedly if we win in favour of the Stormcloaks, it wouldn't actually be him I was speaking to. It would be one of the Greymane family instead. Uh, but basically they'd go along with me for that. Or if the Imperials actually win, if I just do the remaining, I think it's three missions for the Imperials. So actually that's pretty close by. He'd be fine as well because the Civil War would be over. But that's not very fun. What's much more fun is the ceasefire. So we're going to be doing the council meeting. Then I would be glad to help you with your mad dragon trapping scheme. That's the spirit. So, one peace conference to organise, and only one group of people are well respected enough by all sides to make that happen. Conveniently, the Greybeard. So, let's go sort that out. Right, good news lads, let's have ourselves some nice peace between everyone, because won't that be wonderful? Alduin? We heard the dragon wren shout from here. You defeated him? Yeah, but that was like yesterday or something. Seriously, we've moved on. We don't care about that. Now we're talking about peace. So be it. Tell Ulfric and General Tullius that the Greybeards wish to speak to them. We will see if they still remember us. Marvelous. You guys are on side. Let's get on with the rest of it. Deliver the message to the warring parties. If they will listen, I will do what I can to bring them to terms. Now, slight, slight, slight concern with, you know, the war counts that will happen in this really rather awesome room that seems to be set up for exactly that purpose, so isn't that marvellous? Um, every time I go to Windhelm, I do end up in a bit of a scrap with the police, and I have a bounty of, I think, about 9,000 gold at this point, and I have actually previously attempted to assassinate Ulfric Stormcloak, I believe, twice at this point, so there is a possibility he may object to me running up to him to deliver a message. Okay, peace conference attendee number one, General Tullius, sir. Now, he presumably likes me, so this can't actually be that difficult to do. Hjalmarch is an important buffer zone between the rebel forces and the capital. Yeah, I don't actually care about that. We're now actually not talking about war anymore. Now we're talking about peace. Sorry, I know this is a bit of a 180 for my character, but it's all about peace now. I don't kill people anymore. Just like dragons or something. The Greybeards? What do those old hermits want with me? A uh, peace council! Why, there's nothing to discuss as long as that traitor Ulfric is in arms against his rightful emperor. Yeah, but the person who's going to be adjudicating on the peace conference is going to be the Dragonborn, who's a signed-up, fully-paid member of the Legion, alright? This could work out well, you stupid bastard. So before we go to this conference, what do we actually have left here? The Empire already controls the vast majority of Skyrim by volume and majority of the actual holds. And yeah, White Run has been secured, the attack there has already been beaten back. That all works pretty nicely. Riften is still technically Stormcloak, but I have basically got the uh, the chief's head steward or whatever working for me, and their actual Jarl is pretty hopeless, so that doesn't really matter so much. Winterhold is still technically aligned with the Stormcloaks, but it's tiny, has basically no men, basically not important. Arguably, the real power around Winterhold is the College of Majors. I control that, so that's Imperial aligned as well. That just leaves Windhelm itself. So basically, those guys are pretty much bloody screwed, aren't they? Yes. Yes, they are. Alright, so, Windhelm. The problem is, these guys might attack me on sight. If they're willing to offer me the chance to pay for the bounty, I'll take it. By order of the yard. Stop right there. Okay, 15,000 gold! I wonder, if I actually submitted and asked to be taken to jail... How long would I spend in jail? <laughs> That's actually an interesting question. Hang on, I'm gonna find that out. So, right now, it is the beginning of Sun's Height, uh, year 202, in the fourth era. Got it. Okay, reloaded, and I've just checked. So, as it turns out, Sun's Height is July, so we're pretty much bang on exactly the middle of the year of the year 202. Now let's see how long 15 bloody thousand golds worth of crime takes to pay off in prison. I guess you're smarter than you look. I'm really not. This is going to take a very, very long time. So, most jails allow you to serve your time by sleeping in your cells beds. <laughs> For God only knows how flipping long. You can also try to escape. Your equipment can be found in a chest somewhere in the jail. So I could attempt to 
Sorry, you didn't take my lock picks off me. Well, technically I've only got one. I've got one lock pick. So, I mean, if I wanted to escape, why would I have actually bothered doing any of this? Though, admittedly, I felt like I could just escape because you may have taken all my equipment off me and how much have I got? Ooh, nothing. Give you all my gold. Boo. Wait, that's just not fair. Sorry, the bounty was 15,000. I submitted and went to jail, so you took 60,000 off me. That, that's not cool right there, okay? <laughs> yeah, I've got some ragged boots, some ragged robes, etc. Oh, Right, so now I just need to wait for however bloody long it takes, I guess. I guess I'll just serve my time in jail now and see how long that bloody takes. <laughs> I'm generally not sure, but I'm guessing a long time. Okay, I've been released... And I've got all my stuff back. That's nice. Uh, so the question is, what's the date? What is the date now? It is now the... Sorry, the 10th of Sun's Height of 2... I killed the entire police force. I had a bounty of 15,000 gold. And you kept me in jail for eight days. Eight days was my sentence. You're the one who casts those illusions. And now, basically, me and the new police are cool. Now they're just making nice comments about my illusion magic. Well, that's just... What? <laughs> I was generally expecting it to be, like, you know, the winter of, like, 207 or something. Like, you know, and five years would have been, you know, optimistic. Like, I feel like that should be a bloody life sentence. Like, how many people did I kill? Like, it was a lot. It was a lot of people I killed. Well, that's just quite frankly weird. And yeah, what you're supposed to do as a result is, yeah, lose your progress and all of your skills. So as a result, all my skills are kind of their progress towards the next level has been set back down to zero. Because that's like a long prison sentence by the sentence game. But eight days! Like, is it definitely? Yeah, sun's height. It's the same cocking month. It's been eight days! Right, well, screw that business. Let's just travel back in time and just pay the bloody fee. By the order of the yard. Stop right there. I will gladly stop right there. Here's 15,000 gold. Now naff off. But that is just the bloody weirdest thing. If I didn't feel like paying that 15,000 gold, I could just spend eight days in prison and all would be forgiven. That's worth, like... I must be charging a really high hourly rate for my time when I'm in prison right there. And now everyone's fine with me just running into the Palace of the Kings, going into the back areas, gonna go and try to find Ulfric. In fact, I'm pretty sure I am actually heading towards Ulfric's bedroom right now. Oh, there he is! Yep, Ulfric is completely on his own. No guards. This is his private quarters. So... <laughs> Skyrim is a silly place sometimes. Right, good news, Jarl Ulfric Stormcloak. Uh, I also want you at the bloody peace conference. It's about time they turned their gaze from the heavens back to our bleeding homeland. What do they want? Peace conference, it's gonna be great! I have the greatest respect for the Greybeards, of course. And the dragon attacks are a growing plague. But the political situation is still delicate. Not all the Jarls are fully committed to supporting me as High King. I can't afford to appear weak. I can't agree to this unless Tullius himself will be there. Well, good news, he's actually already agreed to be there. And also, that's a really bloody optimistic interpretation of the situation. Right bloody there. I'm not 100% convinced all of the Jarls are behind me. No! No! In fact, actually, I think, aside from you, only two are. And one of them is completely bloody hopeless and has no idea what's going on in her own city, so... You've basically got one other Jarl behind you, and he is the Jarl of the weakest, smallest, most completely uninteresting hold in all of Skyrim. So, well done, Ulfric. You just keep telling yourself that, yeah, everyone's on side, just not convinced they're 100% on side. Because, uh, yeah, that's that's not actually how it is. But, you know what, let's see if we can just persuade him for some... Okay, sorry. Apparently, um, Ulfric and uh, this guard have a thing, because... Or they don't. Or they just don't. It, it's all fine. Come back. Come back. We're having a discussion here. Yes. I'll give Tullius one more chance to quit Skyrim with his tail between his legs. Right. That's Ulfric Stormcloak on board. Let's go have ourselves a peace coffer. Are you... 
Are you running for any particular reason? Is everyone just... Okay. Now that guy's just running up to... Oh, for it, you know, what he gets up to in his own time when he's not yarling, that's his business. If he wants to keep, you know, a personal guard just waiting in his chambers, and also if he wants to get visited by a guy whose name is, um... Let's, let's actually just move on. Let's just move on. Right, good news, lads. Peace conference is on. Let's get it going. So, you've done it. The men of violence are gathered here in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. Look, it's fine. I'll take care of it for you. It's okay. And here we go. Everyone has actually made it to the conference. Marvellous. Now, before we take our seat, we have one important bit of business to take care of. So this is going to be... A big, long, interesting discussion in which everyone's going to, like, you know, make points and counterpoints. It's all going to be very serious and very interesting. And that means we don't actually need anyone standing at the side of the room going, Oh! So, what I'm going to do is arrange peace in our time. And what you're going to do is stay out here for a second. So, just, just one flipping second. No, just, uh... Something a bit more appropriate for assassination. Uh, Blade of Woe. That'll do. So you just you just wait down here. Thank you. And also absorb a bit of your like life force or something. And you just wait here for a second. I will be right back. Right. So, peace conference. Everyone take a seat. And remember, I am on the Imperial side. I am a paid-up member of the Imperial Legion. Yet, mysteriously, I am allowed to adjudicate... <laughs> So now I'm just kind of curious what actually happens if I basically adjudicate everything in favour of the Empire. Because I've got to assume this quest ends with, uh, yeah, Ulfric agreeing to whatever I put forward regardless. So what happens if I basically constantly rule in favour of the Empire when Ulfric is clearly like the less reasonable of the two? Well, actually, in all fairness, Tullius is not that reasonable. They're both unreasonable assholes. I'm guessing that's kind of the point. But yeah... If I were to basically rule entirely 100% in one direction rather than the other, why and how does the game script manage to kind of bend itself around to make Ulfric agree to the terms regardless? Now that everyone is here, please take your seats so we can begin. And everyone takes their seat. Lovely. I hope that we have all come no. here in the spirit you of... you insult us by bringing her to this negotiation? Your chief Talos hunter? That didn't take long. Diplomat. Here, here. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordat. She's part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please. If we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this would be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. What do you think? Are we going to let Ulfric dictate terms to us before the negotiations even start? No! No, we're not! Screw Ulfric! Ten points to Gryffindor and also the Empire! Um, Elowen can stay, cause you say so! I'm glad we see eye to eye on this. We walk then. No, we'll stay. Out of respect for the Dragonborn and our Greybeard hosts. But she is to observe nothing more. We are not negotiating with her. Is that clear? Ulfric, why so hostile? After all, it's not the Thalmor that's burning your farms and killing your sons. She's supposed to be on our side? No, exactly. No. Not this time. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? I have something to say first. Here we go. The only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the Dragon Menace. There's nothing else to talk about. Unless the Empire is finally ready to renounce its unjust claim to rule over the free people of Skyrim. I knew he wouldn't We're be able to, to resist. A temporary truce to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons, nothing more. I consider even talking to the Empire a generous gesture. Are you done? Did you just come here to make speeches, or can we get down to business? 
I like General Tullius. Who would like to open the negotiations? Yes, let's get down to it. We want control of Markar. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. So that's why you're here, Ulfric? You dare to insult the Greybeards by using this council to advance your own position? Jarl Elisif. General, this is outrageous. You can't be taking this demand seriously. I thought we were here to discuss a truce. Elisif, I said I'd handle it. Ulfric, you can't seriously expect us to give up Markarth at the negotiating table. You hope to gain in council what you've been unable to take in battle, is that it? I'm sure Jarl Ulfric does not expect something for nothing. Yes, that'd be entirely what out of character. I want in return. Wait, General, you don't intend to just hand over Markarth to that traitor? This is how the Empire repays us for our loyalty? Enough. First, let's be clear. This council wasn't my idea. I think it's a waste of time. You are a traitor to the Empire, and deserve a traitor's death. But I at least will negotiate in good faith. Since we're all here at your request, I'd like to hear what you think Markarth is worth. Now here's a really fun thing about this council, which is it dynamically shifts who's gonna ask what, depending on what the state of Skyrim is, and who actually holds what. Uh, because before I actually did it this way, I quickly checked what the alternative options were going to be. Because if you basically don't do any of the Imperial or Stormcloak options, you haven't actually done either side, loads of options are available. Like if you give like one side one point, then the other side demands something more down the line. You can manipulate a bit more easily. Because I've already done loads for the Empire, and basically there's almost nothing left on the map that belongs to the Stormcloaks, my options here are extremely limited. So it doesn't matter how I respond to the the question about Elowin, that actually leads to the same point, which is um, Ulfric demanding Markarf, and the only thing I can offer in response is Winterhold, because there's not enough left to hand over. Personally, I feel like Riften would be a better trade for Markarf, because Winterhold's tiny and broken down, there's like five buildings in it, but Markarf is like massive and full of buildings, and really well fortified, and incredibly rich, and whatever, but uh, apparently that's all I can say, and it doesn't matter which way I go with the Elowin question, this is the only way it can go because I've already done loads of the Imperial Quest, which I didn't actually realise when I was doing them was going to lock off some options here in the Council, but unfortunately this is literally the only way this peace conference can go at this point, which feels like a really, really unfair trade. <laughs> like, you know, I'm doing everything I can to support you guys, but unfortunately, uh, because I've already uh, helped you out in battle, there's only so much I can do at this point. Uh, but I really feel like I should be able to suggest Riften. That'd be a way more fair trade. Winterhold would allow us to directly threaten the rebel supply lines out of Windhelm. Hardly worth giving up Markarth for, but not a bad starting point. You heard what she said, Alfred. We've made you a fair offer. Are you serious about these talks, or are you just here to posture? You're different from what I expected, Dragonborn. You treat us with respect, despite your known Imperial sympathies. As for you, General Tullius, I see now that Garmar was right. Talking to the Empire is just as useless as ever. If you think you can hold- Oh, bloody hell, Ulfric, give the bloody speeches a rest. Don't hand me a mug of sheep's piss and call it meat. These terms are still not acceptable. I'm sure you have something in mind. Damn right we do. You surrender Hjalmarch to us, and take Idgrad Ravencrone with you. Sorely the Builder will take over as Jarl of Morthal. Where do these demands stop, Ulfric? Do you expect me to surrender all of Skyrim? I'm willing to let the Dragonborn be the judge of the fairness of my request. No, this is incredibly unfair. You're already getting flipping Markov for Winterhold. That's ludicrously unbalanced in your favour. But no, apparently he wants flipping more. Seriously, the Empire does not need to give up any more territory. You are getting a ludicrously, ludicrously good deal already. Even the Dragonborn betrays Skyrim. These terms are not acceptable. You know that. I'm listening. Don't play dumb, Tullius. Bah, this is a waste of time. I can see that we won't get better terms from this council. So be it. 
the sons of Skyrim, at least for the greater good above our own interests. You're getting cocking Markov for Winterhold. That's an incredibly good deal. These are the terms currently on the table. Markov will be handed over to Ulfric's forces. Jarl Edmund will step down and Thongvor Silverblood will become the Jarl of Markarth. Ulfric will allow Imperial troops to enter Winterhold. Kralda will replace Coriel as Jarl. You both agree to this? I shouldn't agree to terms that so blatantly favor the Empire. What the bloody hell are you talking about, you utter madman? You're getting a massive, massive rich hold with loads of silver and mines and everything, and all you're giving up is a crappy little hold that's burnt down and broken hanging off the edge of a cliff! The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce, until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Alright, job flipping done! And now I imagine if I speak to Ulfric, he's gonna act like he got a bad deal, even though he just got an amazing one. I sacrificed a lot here today for this plan of yours. You just got Markov, you utter lunatic! How to lure a dragon to dragon's reach at all? Oh, also, apparently they're, like, discussing how to lure a dragon in. That's fine. Hang on, sorry. What's the deal going on here? I anticipated the problem. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the library of Skyhaven Temp. An unguessed trove of lost lore. But the important thing is that the Blades recorded many of the names of dragons they slew. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has raised up. Okay, and I'm guessing that's important for some reason. Uh, don't you see? The names of dragons are always three words of power. Shouts. By calling the dragon with a voice, he will hear you wherever he might be. Aha! Uh -huh. And then we can just summon him. Marvellous. And we don't have to ask why, it's just name magic. It's just a thing, accept it. And the Blade's now going to refuse to cooperate until I murder Parthenanx, even though he's helping me. So the Blade's are dicks and I don't care about them. Right, how do you feel about this, by the way, Tullius? Could have gone worse. Now it's up to you to deliver. Okay, this feels really backwards, alright? Ulfric got by far the best deal, he thinks he did badly. Tullius, meanwhile, is acting like he's actually got a pretty good deal, but mysteriously, yeah, he's actually gained a crappy hold for giving away really... Alright, fine. Maybe I'm, like, overestimating the value of Markov, but it strikes me as big and rich, and Winthold strikes me as small and pointless. So, giant dragon mentor located, dragon rent learnt, travelled through time, delivered the Elder Scroll to where it needs to be in order to actually go and take care of the time wound or whatever. Peace conference assembled, arranged, and peace in our time secured for the moment at least. Now, let's go catch ourselves a dragon. See? I told you we were going to make some bloody plot progress today. Also, your yarniness gets out of... Let me through, by the way. Yeah, I'm the Thane. I'm allowed in. Uh, we've got ourselves... Wait, there's... Okay. Apparently... <laughs> Every single bloody Jarl in this game uh, likes having a slightly intimate relationship with their closest bodyguards. And that's fine. That's fine. It's slightly creepy that you like watching him sleep. But let's do this, by the way. Let's go catch ourselves a dragon. As I promised, my men stand ready. The great chains are oiled. We wait on your word. Marvellous. Well, let's go trap a dragon then. My men know what to do. Make sure you do your part. I'm putting my city in your hands. Alright, job done. Let's get down there and summon ourselves a dragon. Alright, here we go. And if I recall correctly, this is actually really simple. Like, you don't even really need to fight or beat this guy. You just need to basically lure him inside. So, out onto the balcony. There's a... Is that the dragon or is that an unrelated dragon? That might be an unrelated dragon. I'm not sure. There's just a dragon over there. Anyway, let's just quickly get this dragon summoned. And yes, I'm luring him right now. That shout I just did was the plan. Where's he, by the way? Is he, is he planning to show up? There we go. Has anyone seen him? Because because I've got a special, like, dragon murdering sword here, which is pretty badass if I do say so myself. There he is. Right. 
So, just let him land. Uh, by the way, like, the plan is... Okay, so that person... <laughs> no one's reacted. <laughs> Everyone's like, eh, can't be bothered. Can't be bothered this. Oh, yeah, I should probably, like, dragon rend him, shouldn't I? Because that's a shout I know. So, that's, that's totally a thing I should do, yes. Uh, right, so I need to wait for him to actually show up at some point and just wait wait okay is the yarn himself trying to take care of this oh here we go there we go got him got him with the dragon rand so now he has to land which he'll hopefully do on the you have guards why would you be doing this yourself right in he comes now don't like face off against him personally just let him literally walk in i can take the flames and Job flipping dumb. Nice, and you can stop hitting him now. He's Ben, or he's a prisoner of war. You flipping? Stop it, Ben, or stop it at once. Damn straight. We don't hit people after they've been captured. So, job done here. Let's have a chat to you quickly. You went to a great deal of trouble to put me in this humiliating position. In Sir Alduin, hmm? no doubt you want to know where to find Alduin. This is a very awkward angle <laughs> for you. Uh, you kind of don't look like a real dragon. You just look like a little puppet, given your jaws basically just flapping away under a completely still head. This is not exactly the most impressive angle for you looking amazing. Look, just tell me where he is and I'll consider letting you go. Renik Vaza, an apt phrase. Alduin, Boval. One reason I came to your call was to test your Thuam for myself. Many of us have begun to question Alduin's lordship, whether his Thuam was truly the strongest. Among ourselves, of course, Muni Mae, none were yet ready to openly defy him. Okay, you sound like you are an excellent traitor in the making. Just tell me where he is, we'll call it even. Once Lord Grosus, innumerable pardons, I digress. He has traveled to Sovngarde to regain his strength, devouring the Silesur, the souls of the mortal dead, a privilege he jealously guards. His door to Sovngarde is at Skaldafin, one of his ancient fanes high in the eastern mountains. Minduran pa ok avarantil. I surely do not need to warn you that all his remaining strength is marshaled there. Zulost ofan hinlan. Now that I have answered your question, you will allow me to go free? I might consider it, but... Yeah, if you promise to serve me, dragons seem like honourable sorts. Um? Serve you? No. Need id. If and when you defeat Alduin, I will reconsider. Hmm, Krosis. There is one... Detail about Skaldafen I neglected to mention. You have the Thurm of Adova, but without the wings of one, you will never set foot in Skaldafen. Of course, I could fly you there, but not while imprisoned like this. Okay, fair enough. Ah, you see, that looks better. When you're facing sideways, you look much better, actually. So, go on then. I think this seems reasonable. I'll set you free if you promise to take me there. Onikan Korav Gain Mirad. It is wise to recognize when you only have one choice. And you can trust me. Zuni Tarudis. Alduin has proven himself unworthy to rule. I go my own way now. Free me, and I will carry you to Skaldafin. Alright, we have ourselves a deal here. Marvelous. You have anything to say about this, by the way? I'm still amazed that your plan worked. 
Excellent, he does, but he's not actually willing to say anything unique other than that. Ooh! Oh, Farangar wants to look. Oh, that's marvellous. Look, I'm sorry. No tests. Just step away from him. We're about to actually let him free. I can't believe that worked. Yeah, I can't believe it either. But by the way, uh, we're setting him free now. You sure about that? You want to let that dragon loose after all the trouble to catch him in there? Yeah, 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 it's fine. Just let him out. Your funeral. Someone else is going to have to help you get him back in there again. Get ready to open the trap. Alright, so let's just open that up. And the dragon goes free. And turns himself around. Doesn't eat anyone on the way out. Aside from like that one guy. That one guy he did admittedly already eat. And now he is simply just going to sit there politely. Everything's 100% fine. Ready to take me off. To, well, actually not to Sovereign Guard, to Skull Delphin or something. <laughs> by the fact, this guy's just going to chill out here and watch. Because, oh, I'll have that arrow, by the way. He just wants to have a look -see. Not often you get to actually examine a dragon, you know, up close and everything. Everybody wants to look marvellous. But before we go, before we do go and wrap up this whole Alduin thing and all of the rest of it, there's, there's one thing we have to address, isn't there? It's one very important thing. Because this is... Uh, this is my destiny as the Dragonborn. This is the Dragonborn's job. This is something for me and for me alone. This is the final test I need to do. And if I am indeed a worthy Dragonborn, then that means, yeah, it needs to be me that does it. And once upon a time, we had such a big, big group of people that travelled around with us and... They've all gone on their own separate ways now, their own separate journeys, their own adventures. Vigilance is happily back at Markarth, which is mysteriously now in Ulfric Stormcloak's possession for no well-explained reason, though he doesn't seem particularly happy about that. But that's okay. There's lots of dogs there, lots of dogs you can hang out with. Actually, in the Yarl's Palace, I assume they're still there and they weren't, like, you know, taken with the actual uh, Imperials when they decided to pull out and... Obviously, Moira. Moira was always a bit of a, a part-timer, to be honest. And then Iona. Where the cock did Iona go, by the way? We never actually found her, but Iona has just gone somewhere. I assume she's fine, wherever she is now. And that just leaves you, Benor. You know, Benor, it's funny how things change, isn't it? Like, when we first met, when we first met, I was struggling. I was struggling in the world. I was going from companion to companion, and I think one had just died, Goldir, or whatever his bloody name was. He just passed away. Sorry, I didn't actually mention that to you uh, when I hired you. And then I just ran into you, and I kind of assumed that you'd just maybe help me out a little bit with a vampire in that town. There were some vampires or something. I forget. It was a long time ago now, and that would be it. We'd... Say our goodbyes and that'd be the end of it. I didn't know that you were going to still be here. Very, very long time on. But back then, back then I needed your help. And these days, I cannot but notice it feels like you need mine. And I don't blame you because much of this is my fault. Much of, you know, your current condition is my fault. I... I was the one who did kill you that one time, and then I believe, if I'm counting correctly, 17 times since, I did eat your heart out of your chest. I'm pretty sure I admitted to that, so that's all fine. That's fine too. So, in many ways, if you're feeling a bit fragile these days, it is my fault. It's absolutely my fault, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for a lot, actually. I could have been a better wife. I admit it, but you, you couldn't possibly have been a better husband, so thank you. Just thank you for everything. But we did make those vows till death do us part, and death has parted us quite a few times, actually. You do keep dying over and over, and I've realised maybe it's not actually that healthy for either of us to 
keep doing that. I mean, there's probably some psychologically troubling issues around a woman who keeps bringing her dead husband back to life. In fact, actually, I think there are actually several quests in Skyrim about people who couldn't actually bear for their partners to die and thus try to bring them back with necromancy. And generally, they're the bad guys and they've gone mad. So, as I do need to go and do this one final thing for myself, I think now it's time. It's time that you can be at peace and I can manage on my own. But thank you so, so much for everything you've done. And that means, just to make sure I don't get cold feet about this later, there's only one way to do this properly. So, just prepare the Blade of Woe. I think Ben Orr knows what this is like. It's not the first time this happens. So down goes Ben Orr. But of course, there'd be nothing to stop me just getting cold feet and bringing him back. And for that reason, there's one more thing we need to do. The spell Dread Zombie. Just quickly get him back up again. There we go, but not a thrall. I'm afraid, Ben Orr, this is a temporary arrangement. So, now, as the sun sets, I think we have, I'm not sure, 30 seconds to go, 60. Not much time left, really, so I guess maybe we just... Enjoy our final moments together. Ah, we've got Benor here wearing his heavy armor who claims he is the toughest guy in this town and could take me barehanded. I wonder if I beat the hell out of him, maybe, just maybe, he'd actually be willing to side with me and come with me as a companion. Oh my goodness, the entire town has actually showed up. The entire town has come to watch Benor and I get married. Once in the entire town, like... Three people. Iona, we found him! It's okay, Benor. It's okay. Everything's gonna be fine. 